We are glad to be here with you folks, Acts chapter number 5, and I will tell you, um, this week I was uh, praying, I knew Josh had been asking me to come up and, and be with you folks for an occasion, and so I was praying, I could take you to the place I was praying this week and just asking God, Lord, what is it that truly I should preach and teach and try to convey and be a help to folks? And uh, on my knees in a place of prayer, God just brought this text to mind and uh, probably a message I'll never preach again, most likely, but uh, spent time last evening preparing and praying and asking God to, to use this time to be a help to you folks and to Brother Andrew and Sister Amanda and Luke Caleb and all of you. Uh, we serve a great God, folks, and a great God who wants to use us greatly. The Bible does say, Call unto me, and I will answer thee, and show thee great and mighty things which thou knowest not. Mm -hmm. Jesus Christ said, And if I go, I will come again. But then he also said, Greater works than these shall ye do. And so God has called us to a great, a great work. And I want to encourage you today in that great work. So let's pray about it for a second and then read our passage and jump in. Good. Father, we love you. I thank you for the opportunity to assemble together with these folks here at Sound Words Baptist Church. And pray that our assembly today, first and foremost, would glorify our God. Yes. Thou art worthy. Thou art worthy, O Lord. And I pray that this morning, or now, this afternoon, our gathering here would be an edification to these people. Father, I pray that you would knit hearts to the cause of Christ. And uh, Lord, that you will uh, lift up heads. And may we uh, put our hand to the plow and not turn back. May we be faithful in so doing be not weary. We pray this in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 All right, so Acts chapter number 5, I want you to find, and we're going to read two verses there. And I'm going to tell you in advance, we don't have any intention to be rude, but as soon as I'm done preaching, I'll ask uh, Brother Josh to come and close in prayer and lead out as he would choose thereafter. But if you'll understand, my wife and I are going to grab our coats and head back down to the van and turn tail back to uh, London working to get there in time for the 6 o'clock service. They'll, they're okay to get started. If I'm not there at 6, but I started a message last Sunday and going to finish that this Sunday as, as God will allow us to. Amen. So please understand that. I'll let you remain seated. Matthew chapter 5, verse 38, verse 39. The Bible here reading, uh, Acts 5, 38, 39. But now I say unto you, refrain from these men and let them alone. For this counsel or this work be of men, it will come to naught. But if it be of God, ye cannot overthrow it. Lest happily ye be found to fight even, uh, ye be found even to fight against God. We'll come and understand the context of that just in a little bit. But I want to preach to you here for a bit. And I'll announce the title in a little bit. As I speak to you today, though, it is both with enthusiasm and follow me. It's with enthusiasm and enthusiasm rather, and also a little bit of reluctance that I come and get to speak to you today. And you'll understand that in a minute. As I speak with you today, I will speak in the Spirit of God, and I seek to speak in the Spirit of God to clearly and concisely, uh, passionately and compassionately, sincerely and truly, and firmly and lovingly speak to you from the Word of God and what God has put upon my heart. I'm going to uh, go ahead and let you know and, and stay to position here. First of all, I want to let you know, and Brother Josh knows this, I'm an old-fashioned, fundamental, independent, Jesus-loving, soul-winning, sin-hating, devil-fighting, King James Bible preaching, a preacher. There's no ifs, ands, or buts about that. That's not up for debate, nor up for change. My pastor years ago, when I was uh, a teenager, uh, asked me to sing, Jamie. I was your age, a little younger, maybe 14-ish. I got saved when I was 13. God's hand reached down into really a, a mess of a home. I was I was uh, born in an adulterous or conceived in an adulterous affair, and God reached down in the midst of sin. And my pastor, Pastor Billy Robertson, and a man from my church came and shared the gospel with my mom and dad. After I was born, January 1st, 70, my parents were, uh, come on in, folks, come on in. After I was born, January 1st, 1970, uh, my mom and dad got saved February 20th, 1970. Mm -hmm. And they obeyed the Lord and were baptized just a couple days thereafter. And to this day, they're still serving the Lord in the same church. My pastor's gone to heaven now. But all of that to say this, my pastor asked me when I was a 
teenager, I got saved 13, started to preach at 14. He said, Phil, I'd like you to learn a song. We had some fellas that sang together. Mark, did I remember right? Did I give you the right name, Mark? I called you Luke. Amen. But I've got a Luke and you're Mark. Um, but he asked us, uh, fellas, I'd like you to learn this song and sing it. And the song was, I Came Here to Stay. Do any of you know that song at all? So run if you want to, run if you will, but I came here to stay. If I fall down, I'm going to get right up because I didn't start out to play. Well, it's a battlefield, brother, not a recreation room. Fight, it's not a game. So run if you want to, run if you will, but I came here to stay. Last verse, my pastor wrote the words. Most haven't heard it. It goes on to say this. Now in these days, there's a whole lot of Christians that just won't take their stand. They try to straddle the fence and play both sides if they can. But I thank God for those folks I meet who aren't ashamed to say, I'm a fundamental premillennial independent Baptist and I'm going to stay that way. And we'd sing it. And so I say that to say this. I'm an old timey, old fashioned, leather long, long preacher. Amen. And, and uh, I'm not planning to change on that. What I say next, I say neither spitefully nor hatefully. But I do say, and with permission, ask in advance, Brother Josh and I sat and talked a little bit ago, and he asked me to come this way, and I said, yes, okay, fine, but I also want to convey to you some, some matters from my heart to your heart, make sure we're on the same page about it. And so with permission, I do clearly state here, and don't get upset at me, understand, but I want you to know I clearly am not involved, nor endorsing of, of what's referred to as the movement of, of itself as the new IFB movement. Okay, so don't get upset at me about that. That's not, that's not my endorsement. I'm not kicking, and I'm not fussing, and I'm not fighting against those that are. Mm -hmm. But that's not my position. Uh, there is nothing new under the sun, the Scripture says. The Scripture says, Seek ye the old paths, where is the good way? Mm -hmm. Again, don't get upset at me or mad. We're coming around the bend here in just a second. Hi, folks. Come on in and settle in. So as I said, I'm not an endorsement of that. You know, I believe, your pastor knows that I'm an old, old-timey, old-fashioned, fundamental, independent Baptist. By the way, I'll say this for free. I'm not simply in the movement, what as referred to by some as the old independent or the old IFB. I'm not in that movement. I'm just in the position of being an independent, fundamental Baptist preacher. That, that's a doctrinal, Amen. biblical position that yeah. I take, okay? When God called us to start the church 21-some years ago, uh, God, God called us to start a church. I thank God for those pastors and those churches and those people who prayed, those who supported, and some that still do, and love us and encourage us in the work of God. But when we came to London, Ontario, Canada, Josh, I came knowing the call of God upon my life to come and start a church. Uh, I did not have a group of people necessarily, whether it was two or 20 or 500. There wasn't a group of people that we were coming to. We just begin to take God's Word and go knock on doors and talk to people and try to tell people of Jesus Christ and salvation. And God called us to London, Ontario, Canada to start a church. Now, I want to talk to you about that today. Because what is needed here, again, folks, and don't get upset at me or under, misunderstand me, but what is needed here is not uh, an association of a movement. That's right. What is needed here isn't just... Uh, a group of folks that say, you know what, I, I'm kind of weary of this or that or that, so let's try something new. Mm -hmm. Now, what we need is some people that know God has called me. Yes. And it's time to anchor down, serve God, and give the life that He's given to me to win souls, to invest in people, to reach people for Christ, and to build their lives on the Word of God. That's right. Mm -hmm. So, uh, it's a call to commitment. Again, please understand, I'm not here. I talked to Brother Josh the other day, and I said, look, let, let's be honest, there's going to be some, and, and every preacher has some, and every Christian has some. That's part of one, one, one part of being an independent, fundamental Baptist uh, believer. Uh, we're going to have some differentials. Yeah. We're, we're going to have some different vantages a little bit on where we stand. Now, for instance, I believe as a Christian, the, uh, the payment of Christ is the only sufficiency for salvation. Mm -hmm. I believe that the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ is our only hope of salvation. Amen. Faith in who? Jesus, Jesus Christ. Christ. We are only Amen. saved by faith in Jesus Christ. Nothing else added, nothing else taken away. On Christ the solid rock I stand. Yep. All of the Amen. ground is sinking sand. 
I believe with all my heart that the sufficiency of Christ and his payment was through his death, burial, and resurrection. And I also believe the Bible teaches me that Jesus Christ, for three days and three nights, his soul was dipped into hell for us. Mm -hmm. That's my position. I believe that biblically. Mm -hmm. I believe that uh, just as he physically paid the debt of sin in his physical death and his body was put in a grave, I believe that his body was in that sepulcher for three days and three nights. I believe his spirit went to paradise because he told the thief beside him that believed, this day shalt thou be with me in paradise. Mm -hmm. And I believe that his spirit went to paradise and was with the Father and that that thief went with him who believed on Christ that day. And I believe the soul of Jesus Christ for the sake of my sin was dipped into the torments of hell for three days and three nights and suffered the eternal condemnation that I am well worthy of. <laughs> Hallelujah, folks, after Amen. three days and three nights up from the grave he yes. rose. And yes. by the way, he took the keys of death and hell with him. Amen. Praise yes. the Lord. And he we serve a risen Savior. Yes. He's in the right. world today. That's right. Now some men will not necessarily agree and they they do not stand on the truth, I believe, that Christ went into his soul was dipped into hell for us. Right. Now that doesn't mean I'm here to duke it out with them because I believe that they believe that salvation is the sufficiency of Christ. Amen. Yeah, amen. That's right. Now, I don't know the mind of God at its completion. I know the mind of God and what to, is given to us here in the canon of His Word. Uh, I believe the Word of God. I stand upon it. I try to study to show myself approved, not to be ashamed before Him. But folks, neither not I nor you know everything about the counsel of God. I'm yeah. still growing. Anybody else? Yeah, Amen. Yeah, yeah. We all need to be, don't we? Yeah. So none of us have arrived. None of us have a corner on all the truths of God's Word. Do you know when we get to heaven and Jesus, our perfect pastor, is going to teach us His perfect Word, yeah. we're still in heaven for a millennium from now. Still going to slap our knee and go, Ha! How did I miss that? Yeah, that's right. I can't believe I got, I read it how many times and I didn't see that. Oh my goodness. Woo! That's good right there. Amen? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And for eternity to come, we'll rejoice in the truth yeah. of the Gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. Right. Folks, truth does not change. That's right. Mm -hmm. So salvation, back to what I was saying. We're not going to agree on every crossing of the T's and dotting of the I's but look I'm not here for you to be and I'll say more about this in a bit I'm not here for you to be a Lighthouse Baptist Church of London in this city mm. that's, that's, that's not what you're here for right. you're not here don't get mad at me you're not here to be an extension of, of the work down in Arizona and Pastor, Pastor Anderson you're, right. you're not here that's to right. be that right. you're here as God has called a man and a people to serve God yeah. together yeah. you're here to be a local New Testament yes. church in this place God has placed you. Amen. Amen. That's right. So, let's talk just a little bit more about it. So I said, I am not involved nor endorsing of the movement referring to itself as the new IFB. I, I am not, again, don't get mad at me, a fan nor a follower of Pastor Stephen Anderson. I neither follow him nor do I condone him. Uh, you won't find me picking up a pen and criticizing him. Uh, Paul penned it this way, again, and I don't have it right in front of me, Philippians uh, as long as Christ be preached, therein do I rejoice. Amen. Yep. And uh, there are people that Pastor Anderson is reaching for Christ that I could never reach for yep. Christ because I'm not in the, the corner of the world where God has placed him. But I'm saying this, uh, I, I don't look at the YouTubes, and, and just to be honest with you folks, I don't do much computerizing. I, look, my wife's a blonde, and she had to show me how to turn a computer on. <laughs> Amen? So, uh, my, you know, thank God for you putting the timer on the front of this, brother, because I don't know how to work all these things, eh? But, but, folks, we've got to come to the simplicity of this. The callings of God are without repentance. We've got to come to the simplicity of this. Where God calls, God provides. Where Amen. God leads, God succeeds. He goes before. Our Lord knows the way through the wilderness. All we have to do is follow. And Josh, what we've got to know, when I talked to my pastor about coming to Canada and starting a church, when I talked to my pastor, he sat me down. See, when I, when I came, when I believe God had called us to church, to come and start a church, I thought, I'm natively an American, I thought I could just come across the border, work during the week, go soul winning, try to win people to Christ, and then when the church could support, then I could resign my work and so forth as, as far as secular work and pastor the church. But because neither I nor my wife were Canadian or had any ties to Canada, I couldn't just come across and get a job, and you understand that far better than I did as a, as a young uh, adult man. And so I went back the second time, met my pastor and said, Pastor, I thought I could just go get a job, but I can't do that. So what do you think I should do? And here's what he said. What's your name, brother? Robert. Hey, Robert. Good to meet you. I'm Phil. Nice you. Robert, he said this. He looked at me across the desk and he said, Phil, would you stake your salvation 
on the fact that you believe God's called you to London, Ontario, Canada to start a church. And that evening, I sat back in my chair and I said, Pastor, yes, I would. I believe it with all of my heart. Then he said, then what you need to do is, is you need to raise your support and go as a missionary. And I'll be honest with you, that knocked the wind right out of my sails because that was not my intention nor my desire, to be quite frank. And so for two years and three months, we traveled North America sharing the call of God upon our lives. Did you get what I just said? The call of God. Mm. The call of God. I knew beyond any doubt that God had called me to come and start a church. We didn't have one charter member. We didn't have one chair. At the time, we didn't have one song book. We didn't have one offering plate. We didn't have one anything. Mm -hmm. But I had a God in heaven who called me, and I believe with all of my heart that uh, the calling of God, I took, I think it's Acts 17.10, if I remember, I have much people in this city, and I got a, a, a map of the city of London and begin to pray over it, and I begin to say, God, I don't know who it is that I'm praying for right now, but there are people in this city who you're working in their hearts, and as we come to this city and begin to knock doors and win souls and tell folks of Christ, Lord, I pray that you would orchestrate in your uh, plan in their lives that when we cross paths, their heart will be ready to receive the gospel. Right. I was seeking to follow the call of God. Amen. Amen. So, again, follow what I'm saying. I'm not involved with the new IFB. I'm not a follower nor a, a supporter of the Stephen Anderson agenda, as some would call it. I, I would disagree with some of his positions and dispositions and practices. I'm not a, a mid-tribber. I am without a doubt a, a pre-trib believer who believes in the imminent return of my Savior to rapture the saved to be with Him. I've kidded a few others and said, hey, if you want to show up late after the rapture with Jesus' permission, that's fine with me, amen. But I'm tuning my ears in for the sound of the trumpet at any time, amen. I believe the coming of Christ is imminent, hallelujah. Now, now that I've clearly addressed a few of the I am nots, let me address a few I ams. Oh, by the way, there is only one great I am. That's right. Amen. 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 He is the great I am. Amen. Did not Jesus say, I am the bread of life, and I am the living water, right. and I am the door, Amen. and I am the yep. great shepherd? Amen. Yep. So there's only one great I am, that is God, and the great I am sent himself as Jesus Christ come in flesh for the redemption of mankind. Hallelujah. So I do want to mention to you, though, a few I ams, personally, if I can, not calling me I am, but just a few I ams I'll say. I gave you three I am nots to apply to us as we meet here today, but let me say now, I am a follower of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Without hesitation, without embarrassment of being identified, I'm in the Lord's army. Amen. Amen. I want to be a faithful soldier of the Lord Jesus Christ, a Amen. faithful follower of the Lamb. Though I'm not all I need to be and all I ought to be, I truly do love the Lord Jesus Christ. And I want my life to count for Him. Amen. I will say a second I am. I am a King James Bible position believer. Amen. I believe in the verbal inspiration of the Word of God and the fact that God not only inspired His Word, Brother Uri, but that God preserved His Word. God promised to preserve His Word. And folk, if I cannot trust Him to preserve His Word as He said He would, mm -hmm. then how can I trust Him to preserve my eternal soul? Yeah, he right. said He would right. preserve the soul of His saints. Amen. And if He dropped the ball about preserving His Word, how can I trust Him about my eternal well-being? Right. Yes. If, he, if right. he fumbled the ball on, on His Word in preservation, but thank God He hasn't fumbled any ball. Yes. Amen. Right. 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 And every Word of God is pure. And every Word of God is preserved. And every Word of God is perfect converting the soul. Amen. We don't need to change the Word of God. We need to let the Word of God change us. Yeah, that's Amen. right. Continuing on. In the English language, I stand on the old King James Bible, 1611 King James Bible. Let me say another one real quickly, and we're, we're coming to connecting with us here in just a bit. I am a soul-winning Christian. Mm. Oh, not as much as I should be, no doubt about it. But I am, I like how one preacher said it this way years ago, and it's always stuck with me. He said, every one of us were just to be a bunch of nobodies telling everybody about a somebody that yep. can save anybody. That's right. Amen. 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 Uh, soul winning is not, is not about lifting ourselves up because Jesus didn't say if we lift up ourselves, He will draw all men unto Him. Right. It's not about lifting up our church. Our church isn't the answer to the world. Jesus Christ is the answer of this world. Right. Jesus Christ is the Savior for those who will believe. So what we are to do is we are to magnify Christ. We are to go and preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. God's call for every believer is to share the gospel and win souls. That's right. Jamie, when you went out, you were sharing the gospel with folks last evening and beginning to do the best you can, saying, I'm Jamie and we're out 
from Sure Word Baptist Church. I'll tell you something in heaven. Jesus Christ is going, Amen, Jamie. That's right, son. God bless you. Keep on. Keep yeah. on. Right when you there. tell those friends about Christ, that makes the Savior's heart happy. Yeah. Why? Because he, he desires that none perish. He, right. He's not willing that any perish, Amen. but that all come to repentance. Yeah. And so what, what the Lord is looking for is you and I to be lifelines, to be extensions, to be soul winners for yeah. Jesus Christ. God's call is for every believer to share the gospel and to win souls. Can I encourage us? Let's love people where they are. Mm -hmm. We can't reach anybody without going to where they are. Isn't that the parable or the account of the Good Samaritan? Mm -hmm. uh, you know, the, the uh, priest saw where he was and went to the other side. The, the Levite saw the man and his, his uh, beaten and, and robbed and sinful and naked condition. And the Levite took off to the other side and can't be involved, can't get dirty with that. But the Good Samaritan came to where he was. Yes. And if we're going to win souls to Christ, we're going to have to go to people. We're going to have to love yeah. them where we are. Isn't somebody here glad Jesus loved you where you are and He yeah. left where yeah. He yeah. was to come where we are that we could be saved? Amen. That's right. And the Lord Himself said, Now go and do you likewise. Go and do ye likewise. Go and tell others. Love them where they are. Share the gospel with them boldly and faithfully and lovingly. Yet, as you do so, not in belligerence and not in strife and not in argument, but in love and in the power of the Holy Ghost. That's right. Hey, God gave us a dynamite to work in the hearts of men. Brother Josh, I can't work in the hearts of men. The other evening we were out soul winning on Thursday night. We started a what we call Thursday night SWAT soul winning time and uh, soul winning action team. And we're going out and uh, uh, we, we need to get some more momentum and encouragement. So we started this back up on the Thursday nights and just two weeks into it again. But man, we had a good time. Several of us were out Thursday night. And we went to, uh, we just go up and down a certain stretch. You know, it's cold and dark now in the evening times. And so what we do is we look for folks that are already out. You know, they already got their parkas on and they're already out in the, out in the uh, elements and stuff. So, uh, you know, knock on a door in the cold and then they don't want to open the door much. And it's dark and nervous yep. and all that stuff. So we go find folks that are out and about. And so uh, we pulled into uh, this convenience store parking lot because there's always taxi cabs and people coming in and out. And I knew there was often Indian clerks there, folks from India. We have a lot of Indi folks from India that have come for schooling and so forth. So I have some Hindi gospel tracks that I use and whatnot. And so we went there and I jumped out and a couple ladies jumped out and talked to this person and went in and gave the track to the Hindi fellow, the Indian fellow inside. And, and uh, the whole setting, I'm trying to hurry up here, but uh, as we finished up, I helped a couple ladies up into the van, and I turned and I saw a fellow uh, sitting in his van. He observed the whole setting here, you know. He, he saw us come in, and we were there for 10 minutes at least, talking to folks and giving tracts to everybody and going back and forth, discussing Christ with folks. And so as I tucked them in the van and I got ready to go, I saw him there, and I came to his side, went side window, knocked, you know, not literally on it, but like I was going to knock, and he rolled the window. And I said, now you know you got to be dying to know what's going on here. You know, what's all this going on? He said, not my business. <laughs> I'm not watching David, you know. Uh, anyway, I said, you know, you, I said, I'm Pastor Paulus, and here's the gospel track. And friend, we're just out telling folks the good news of, yeah. of knowing how you can go to heaven through Jesus Christ. And uh, boy, he just settled and sitting in his car, and I was outside his window talking to him through the window and got to share the gospel with him. Paul, his name is. And, and sweetly, he trusted Christ Amen. as a Savior on Thursday night. And it's a great blessing. He gave me his number, and I sent him a text. And after I sent him the text, he sent me back a text later on. And he said, uh, oh, I can't say his words exactly. I don't have it with me. But he said something along the lines of, I am so thankful tonight that I got to meet you. And God used you. Yes, he, my wife's lip syncing at me. He did say these words. Thank you for taking the time. Wow to share the gospel with me tonight and changing my life. Right. <laughs> Amen. Yeah, that's good. Amen. I touched base with him last night, but he drives, and so he's up in Tobacco last night and trying to get through the weather, and it was nasty, so he couldn't make it today. But but there's somebody waiting for us. Right. That's right. There's somebody waiting yeah. for us, and, and we're supposed to be conduits of the gospel. Mm. We're to tell folks of Jesus, the mighty to save. So I am a soul-winning Christian. Mm. I am a Christian who believes in biblical standards and separation from the world. God, is not, God has called us, rather, to holiness right. and not to worldliness. That's right. I've been teaching a little bit on last Sunday night. We'll finish up tonight. We have all kinds of contemporary and carnal churches on the go. Mm -hmm. But God has not called us to court carnality, nor has He called us to, uh, what's the word I just used, uh, contemporary. Uh, God, God has called us to uh, truth, and God has called us... 
uh, love not the world, neither right. the things that are in the world. Yep. If I mean love right. the world, the love of the Father is not in him. So God has called us to a distinguished Christian walk. God has called us to be holy as he is holy. So with those things in mind, hang with me just a little bit further. In regards to the people that I speak to and I meet today, some of you I've met briefly here or there in the last while, some I've met for the first time today, some I haven't met at all yet. But I, I told you some I am not, so I've told you some I ams. Now let me come to one more I am here for a bit, shift gears and press on and finish up. I have to say in regards to the people I speak to today that I am a pastor who loves the Josh Gander family. I met Josh uh, a bit over two years ago now, brother, because it would be Novemberish, the end of Novemberish, two years ago now. And uh, if I'm not mistaken, I think the first contact you sent me was an email. I'm not 100% recall now. I'm getting old, these gray hairs pull out a few memory cells once in a while, eh? But pretty sure it was an email, if I remember right. And then I sent it, and I have to say, first time in 20 some years, somebody emailed me that I never knew and said, Could I go soul winning with you? Amen. That doesn't happen very much, amen. But I was encouraged in the heart, and I didn't know who this guy was or anything about him, but. I said, well, I think maybe the best thing to do would be for us to meet personally and be thrilled, of course, to have somebody who has a heart to want to go soul winning and tell folks of Christ. Mm -hmm. And so we met in a, Tim Hortons there and got to know each other and meet each other and begin to meet times going soul winning and probably six months, just six months about anyway. We begin as best we could on a weekly basis as it would work and went out and began to tell folks of Christ together. And it was an encouragement to my heart and I hope an encouragement to his heart yeah. as he made mention uh, six months or so thereafter, on a Sunday morning, I was conducting service and was leading the service and so forth. And then through the back of our auditorium, I saw Brother Josh come in and behind him I saw his wife and young Caleb come in together and had no expectation of seeing them. They lived a good ways away, uh, but they came and, and then we talked a little more. And he said, Pastor Hollis, I really believe that God would have us move our, our membership here and seek to serve the Lord together with you. And I said, well, of course, you know, that'd be a thrill to us and a joy to us to have you do so as God would choose. And, and you believe that that's God's will for you to do. And uh, so, so we talked and we settled that and they moved their membership. And now for uh, this while have been serving the Lord with us as best they can. And they travel some distance coming to us. I was driving the highway today and I was telling my wife, I say, you know, uh, uh, I don't know everything about Brother Josh. I don't know everything about Amanda able to serve the Lord with them for now two years or so. But I'll say one thing positively, the many things that I do know, one thing I absolutely know is there's a committed man that believes God has called him to come and serve you here and minister not only to you but with you as you would uh, follow Christ and get aboard and serve God and go forward. Uh, there's a man that's willingly taking the effort to make the drives and back and forth and hubba bubba and go at it and uh, not casually and not uh, because it's easy but because he has a willing heart and believes that God has led him in doing so. I remember, what, what, yeah, it would have been last summer, summer of 18, that he came to me, uh, uh, I don't know, a week or two in advance, whatnot, and said, here's how, how, how I recall you saying it to me, Pastor, um, uh, there's a need to fill the pulpit, I think is what you initially told me, of a group up in Mississauga. Mm -hmm. And so he said, Could, is it okay? Could I have your permission to go and and fill the pulpit. And so, yeah, sure. Somebody needs a preacher to come and preach. Yeah, I'm for that. And then uh, the next week you went again, and then it became something that you talked to me, and I said, is, is this an ongoing matter? And he said, yes, it seems to be. And and so uh, he's been coming up here now for, you know, six, seven months probably, getting close to it anyway by now, eh? Mm -hmm. yeah. And so how many of you have been coming together in this time frame since my knowledge of Brother Josh coming up this way and you've been making a regular effort of being here and assembling together and trying to serve the Lord together? All right, so several of you. Yeah, okay. Now, I want to testify to you uh, the fact that, that as a pastor, I love this brother, I love his dear wife Amanda, uh, their precious son Caleb. We love them very much, thankful for them. You've met for several months here as Brother Josh has made the committed effort to come and preach the Word of God to you. So now we come back to our text and I come to the heart of the message. As I've told you some I am's and some I am not's, I come now to this question. Sound Words Baptist Church, as the name of your assembling is here, I ask you the question that I hear questioned in this setting of Acts chapter number 5 as 
the disciples are following Christ and the apostles are preaching the gospel and both great uh, works are being done, but yet great persecution has arisen against them as well. And we find Gamaliel here, a Pharisee and a man held in respect and reputation. Verse 34 tells us as, uh, as the council is, is uh, trying to decide on what to do about this group of people. I mean, this new assembling of people, what, what do we do about them, you know? Uh, Gamaliel then speaks, and, and though I would not uh, be in the position of Gamaliel's neutrality here, where he says, you know, just stand back and see what happens. I love what he says right here in these verses where he says in verse 39, if uh, verse 38, if this work be of men, it'll come to naught. Right. But if it be of God, ye cannot overthrow it. Amen. Now he backs up a few verses preceding this and, and he talks about two other instances where uh, Thaddeus, I think you'd pronounce it, uh, verse 36, uh, uh, led 400 men and they joined themselves and they began and did a work, but then when... When Thaddeus uh, uh, was slain, then that work began to be scattered and nothing took of it, right? Yeah. And then he comes to verse 37 and says the same thing, uh, same thing about Judas of Galilee and many people went, but uh, uh, they were dispersed and nothing came of that. So then he comes to our key verse there, 38 and 39, and says, now if this work be of men, if this is, if this is just something Peter's doing, if this is just something that uh, the disciples are doing, it's going to be here for a bit, it's going to be gone. Don't, don't even worry about it. That's right. right. But if it be of God, mm. then you're, you're barking up the wrong tree. That's right. That's right. You're fighting a battle you don't want to fight. Yep. And so I come to you here, as I hear the setting of this verse, I, I hear Gamaliel speaking to uh, the council and the high priest and, and even to the apostles, even though they parted themselves apart a little distance and, and Gamaliel huddled here with you know the religious uh, leaders and so forth and the disciples were a little apart from them. But, but he said these words, I hear it there. What have we here? What have we here? A work of men or a work of God? Yeah. And as I was on my knees praying for you and praying, Brother Josh, for the opportunity to come here, God brought this passage to my mind and this challenge to give you today. What have we here, Sound Words Baptist Church? What have we here, London, Ontario, Canada, Pastor Powellus Lighthouse Baptist Church? I've told our folks before, that is not Paulus Church. Right. Because if it be Paulus Church, it'll come to That's naught. Right. Amen. That, that is not even just the people, though I encourage our people and tell them, look, this isn't your preacher's church. This isn't Paulus Church. I find most times when people give that Paulus Church, that's a disassociation. Mm. God hasn't called us to disassociate from the work of God. He's called us to, to labor, to, to roll up our sleeves, to get involved. You're part of the body of Christ. Amen. Right. Amen. I don't want to wake up tomorrow morning, Mark, and find my, my uh, uh, right leg has ran off to the neighborhood and left me behind. Amen. I, I kind of need that right leg. Amen. It helped Amen. me. Yeah. And, and folks, the work of God needs you. Yeah. The work of God needs me. Why? Because of how great I am? No. Because it's God's plan. That's right. Ben. And God's plan is great, folks. Amen. So, with that in mind, I ask you, what have you here, Sound Words Baptist Church? You face some turmoil within. I'm going to be honest, I don't know all about it. And I, I, don't, I don't do due diligence to try to find out all, all about it. Mm -hmm. i got enough of Phil Powell's to keep in mind that keeps That's me good. busy. Thank God for a wife who's full-time employed in that business. Amen. <laughs> uh, yeah, and she tries as hard as she can. But I still got to work at keeping me in line. Yeah. Does anybody still have flesh like I still yeah. have flesh? Amen. That's right. Yeah, anybody still have a cantankerous carnal appetite that wants to do its own thing sometimes? Oh, yeah. And you have to die to it daily? Yeah. Amen. That's right. Amen. Look, I don't have enough time to surf the channels and check this guy and that guy and that guy and this guy. God called me to go and take the gospel to people. Yeah. And so with that in mind, I ask us, what have you here? In chapter 5, we have an Ananias and Sapphira situation, don't we? There was problems within the church. In Acts chapter number 5, the beginning of it, we see that Ananias and Sapphira lied against the Holy Spirit of God, and God as a result slew them both right there in the front of the church, one at a time. First Ananias, and then Sapphira carried them out and buried them. So, uh, what have we here? Yeah, you've had some turmoil within. Uh, you have faced some turmoil without. There's some critics. Yep. There's some attackers. Amen. Brother Josh, you may have heard me say this before. Church, I'll say it to you. When I first entered the ministry, uh, an evangelist brother, I knew some, not a lot, but some. He made a statement that I marked down and kept it. And I didn't know how important it would be to me in the early days 
But boy, it's been a it's been a lifesaver. It's been a great help. Here's what he said. He'd been in the ministry of evangelism for a year or two, and he came back to some of us guys that worked together with him. So several of us were in, in, in training for the ministry. And he said this word. He said, fellas, sometimes it gets tough out there. Sometimes critics come and, and folks uh, uh, do things that, that are hurtful. But he said these words. Welcome to the ministry. Don't get bitter. Don't get bitter. Amen. Did you get that? Yeah. Don't get bitter. The sand ballads, Tobias and Geeshams of life will come Amen. and rant and rave and huff and puff and yeah. try to blow the house down. Yep. Yeah. I can't disarm their attacks. But one of the worst things I can do is further their attack by becoming bitter mm -hmm. against them or bitter at my situation. Mm -hmm. We'll talk to you more about it in just a second. But what have we here? There's some Ananias and Sapphira issues that will rise up. Those are always more dangerous, to be honest. Mm -hmm. And then there are, are attacks that come from without. And especially in our day of social media, and our day of, uh, of easy communications and so forth and news travel. Remember even, and I mentioned this to you the night we talked, do you remember when uh, Saul and his sons died at the hands of the Philistines at battle and the servant came back and, and, and told David, uh, you're now the king and how do you know this? And he, he told it, all of those things. But then he told the servant, he said, publish it not in Gath. Don't go and tell the news that Saul and his sons have been slain in battle. Why? Lest they rejoice. Folk, we are putting way too much junk about fallen Christianity up for the world to see and causing a detriment and a stumbling stone uh, to folks who need to hear about Jesus the mighty to save. Amen. Amen. We, we, we need to stop this fussing and arguing with everybody. Look again, uh, if, if I cannot agree with the brother about his position, uh, then I simply do not associate with him. Yeah. That doesn't mean I try to kick him. Doesn't mean I try to push him down. Doesn't mean I try... Most of the time we, we're pushing people down. It's because you think you can do it? What do you think, brother? Yeah, most of the reason we're putting people down is because we're trying to lift ourselves up. That's right. right. Yeah. And folks, we're not to be lifting ourselves up. Last time I checked, the Bible said, humble yourself before God. Amen. Right. Yep. Amen. And in due time, He will exalt thee. And we got too much of this selfism. Exalt me. Look at my ministry. Look at what I'm doing. That's wrong. That's, That's right. anti God. Amen. Yeah, yeah. We're to say, look to the left. Look and live. Look to what He is doing. Yeah, Amen. Yeah. Yeah. So there's way too much of this foolishness going on. Now I got a free suggestion for me, for you, and for everybody. Stay dumb to what the critics have to say. Mm. Don't worry about it. That's good. Yeah. Yep. Amen. Did you hear what so-and-so said about you? Nope, and I'm not interested. That's right. I'm interested about what he has to say about me. That's good. And my desire is to hear him say, Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Yeah. Yeah. Don't look up the latest article on YouTube that Brother Criticism and Sister Longtongue has to say. <laughs> hey, by the way, the best way to answer the critics, can I tell you the best way to answer the critics? Don't. Yeah, that's good. You don't have to defend yourself. That's right. I'll tell you what, I'll get him. <laughs> when they mocked, when they accused, when they, uh, what's the word I want to use? Malign Jesus Christ, what did he do? He held his peace. That's right. As a lamb led to the slaughter, he said nothing. Mark, you're not strong because somebody wants to pick on you and try to beat you up and you say, well, I'm going to take you out. No, that's not strength. Strength is being able to, resi to, to restrain yourself. Strength is when you could take him out. But you say, no, I'm going to be bigger than that. I'm, I'm not going to hurt him even though he's hurt me. Anybody can hurt somebody else. But it takes godly Christianity to take the hurts and give them to God and say, God, I put it in your control. And you know what's being said, and you know the hurt that that brings to my heart. But God, you, the, the healer of broken hearts, and you, the mender of lives, I pray you'll give me strength, and all I want to do, God, is serve you and go forward. So help me to do so. Did not God say, touch not my prophets, and do my, touch not my anointing, and do my prophets no harm? Mm -hmm. That's right. Yep. You know, one of the best ways to respond to criticism, as I said, number one is don't let God take care of it. But number two, best way to respond to the critics? Just get busy about the work of God. Yeah. You know what I found out most of the time when people criticize, and we've been criticized through the years, and I don't have time to tell you about it, 356, 
we've been criticized for this or for that. I mean, from the very beginnings of our church when we want people to Christ and baptize them. You know, the Bible says they that were saved were baptized the same day. And we baptize folks as soon as possible once they get saved. If they're willing and obedient, we want to help them. We've been yeah. criticized for that from day number one of our church. Mm -hmm. I've been called a cult and all those kind of things. And, and so be it. But friend, listen to me. Back on track where I'm saying, best thing to do, I found it a long time ago, that the ones that are criticizing, yeah. if we're out and we're doing a job, let's say we're framing up a house or whatever, four of us guys, there's four of us right here, four of us guys are working away, man, we're erecting that wall and we're about to put it up. I found a long time ago that if we're busy in the task, we're working away, doing our part as best as we know how, sweating, laboring, giving it our all, I found out most of the time the one criticizing is the one that doesn't have his hammer and ash. Right. Yep. It's the one who's not grunting in the effort. Mm. It's the one who's over here spectating, saying, oh, you know what? I'd do it better if I were there. Well, oh, then get there, amen? Yeah, that's right. Get in the work and do it. God's called us to the task. So, so let's jump on in. And so just get to the work of God. Isn't that what happened here in this setting? Look at the last verse of the chapter. Uh, the disciples have been arrested there. This counsel was given. Verse 41, uh, we find out, well, verse 40, uh, they agreed. And when they had called the apostles, they beat them. They were persecuted. They commanded them that they should not speak in the name of Jesus, and they let them go. Verse 41, and the disciples, the apostles, they departed from the presence of the council, rejoicing that they were counted worthy to suffer shame for his name. Now, verse 42, look at it. And daily, in the temple, and in every house, they what? Cease not to teach and preach Jesus Christ. That's right. What they do? Oh, did they have critics? Yeah. Did they have opposition? Yeah. yeah. Did they face persecution? Yeah. Were they sore and beaten? Yeah. yeah. But you know what they did? They just got busy to the work of God. Rise up, O church of God. Mm. Have done with lesser things. Give heart and soul and mind and strength to serve the King of Kings. Yeah, man. Live for Christ. Don't, don't worry about chasing down the, the last criticism that's been given. Don't worry about trying to defend yourself. Just let God take care of it. God's in control. God knows how to take care of His own. Amen. And, and uh, get to the work of God. Critics aren't builders. They're destroyers. Therefore, don't let your spirit be destroyed by their criticism. So here's the question I'm winding down. What have you here? SWBC, Sound Word Baptist Church. If it's just a work of man... It'll come to naught, Brother Josh. Yep. If it's just a rogue, arrogant preacher meeting with disgruntled, uncommitted people, it'll come to naught. That's right. Yeah. Be here for a bit and gone. That's right. If it's just a YouTube channel debate station, it'll come to naught. That's right. Yeah. If it's just part of a movement, it'll come to naught. That's right. But folks. If there be a God-called man, backed by a godly wife, seeking to raise a godly child and children as God would allow, joined together with a remnant of committed Christians desiring to follow and serve Jesus Christ, then there is a work going on that all hell itself can't hold back. Amen? Because yeah, right. Jesus said the gates of hell cannot prevail against the what? The church. Amen? Yes. Did God call you here to start a church? Yeah then if it's the work of God, all hell cannot stop it. Amen. 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 You say, but wait, there's, uh, there's great needs. Um, well, let's see, what's that verse of Scripture? My God shall supply all your need according to His riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Yep. If it be God called, if there be a work of God here and a people of God that say, God has called me to this work, then it's going on. Amen. Right, man. So what have we here? I close and I finish and I'm going to hit the trail. But I finish up and say these things. Here they are. Which are you? If I was preaching to our people, I would say, what are we, Lighthouse Baptist Church? A work of man or a work of God? What are we, South Sound Words, right? Sound Words Baptist Church? A work of man or a work of God? I can't answer that for you. I'm not here to validate or unvalidate mm -hmm. what God is doing here. But you're the ones that have to understand, seal, see, and know that this is what God has called us to.
Just as Jeremiah, not Jeremiah, but Nehemiah of old, God called him to what? Rebuild the wall. And when he came, uh, he knew God had called him. He knew and God had provided for him. And by the way, he addressed the, the remnant of Israel and he said these walls will stand again. I believe Nehemiah believed it so much that if nobody else got on board, God was going to enable him to get the job done. That's Amen. Right. That's right. Thank God there was a remnant of people and the people had a mind to work and in 52 days later those walls were rebuilt and a miracle took place and Sam Ballots and Tobias and Geshems could not hinder it from being done. That's right. Yeah. So, what have we here? As we've said before, as has been said before, the world has yet to see what God can do with one man completely yielded to Him. That one man isn't Phil Powers. Though I want God to use me greater. That one man isn't just Josh Gander. Well, God's going to do something great because Josh Gander. No, but God can do something great through Josh Gander. And God can do something great through Jamie. And God can do something great through Alex. And God can do something great through every one of you men here, and my dear wife, and myself, and dear lady right here. God wants to and can do great and mighty things through you. But we must allow, don't miss it, God to do His work. I remember the first time I preached, 402 and I'm done. I remember the first time I preached, how old did you tell me you are? Eight, right? You're 16, right? I was 14. I surrendered to preach when I was uh, 14 years of age. August 9th, 1984. It was a youth camp. Traditionally, the last Friday morning of the camp was Preacher Boy morning. Oh, I'd wrestled that matter of calling to preach for several months, and I'll not go through the accounting of that. But that, that night, I walked the aisle, and, and I knew God had called me to preach, and I couldn't fight it anymore. And so, quarter to midnight that evening, I came at the end of the service. Everything was finishing for that night. And uh, I was told to go tell Brother Mike my decision. So I came to the altar and said, Brother Mike, God's called me to preach. And so he had me turn in front of the, in front of the young people, 70 or so young people, and said, Brother Phil, surrender to preach tonight. And uh, let's rejoice in the Lord about his decision. And they rejoiced and clapped and all that good stuff. And that's great. Now, as we headed on out, and as I was being there, uh, finished up uh, announcing that decision, I was like this, and Brother Mike was behind me. And as folks started leaving, Brother Mike said, Phil, I turned around, yes, sir. He said, God called you to preach tonight? I said, yes, sir. Uh, he said, you be prepared to preach in the morning. <laughs> Amen. I didn't sleep very good that night, Jamie. I went down to our little dorm thing there, and I was reading my Bible, trying to find what message. And I preached out of Genesis, Genesis uh, a lot, uh, uh, looking to the well-watered plains of, of Sodom and Gomorrah and how he looked, and then he lodged, and then he was in the gate, and his demise there, and it was called Steps to Worldliness. Yeah. Yeah. So I prepared the message that night, and I was ready to preach, and you know, this preacher boy got called up, and this one, and that one, and this one, and you know, I'm sitting there all nervous, and all scared out of my wits, amen. He finally says, all right, Brother Philip Render preached last night, he's going to preach next, and, and I come up there all, you know, okay, okay. I read my text, we're good. I prayed, we're better. I looked up. It got bad. Amen. <laughs> my knees began to knock and sweat began to run down my back and my 30-minute preaching became a three-minute... That's all, folks. Amen. <laughs> and I remember I left that pulpit after a three-minute maybe failure, sat on the front pew there, and I, I thought, dear God, I think you've called this... Uh, sent this call to preach to the wrong address. I don't know I can do this. But God taught me something that day. He taught me, Phil, it's not going to be what you can do for me that's going to make a difference. It's going to be what you will allow me to do through you that can make a difference. God's not going to use us because of our might. That's right. Because of our ability. Look how well I can give the gospel. Jamie, that's not why God's going to use you. God will use you just if you'll be willing to give the gospel. Just if you'll be willing to preach the Word of God. Just if you'll be willing to stand different from this world and stand up, stand up for Christ. God will use that. Yep. He's looking for willing men and willing women and willing vessels that He can fill and flow through. Right. Hey, what happened here? That's right. I can't answer that. For but I know what I want here. I want to be used of God to do His work. 